Welcome everyone, Chris Petrie here. It's fun time, it's a great time to create some interesting paintings. We're going to kind of continue on the um, theme that we've been doing in the last couple um, video series, and that's um, painting in more of a loose style, um, using some, I guess, more amounts of water and paint, um, using some mop brushes and um, just going with a little more loose uh, look, uh, perhaps trying some new techniques, of course. Um, you'll always hear, you know, hear me say, like, try new things in watercolor, especially when you start doing it a lot and you're working at it, you know, quite frequently. You sometimes get bored just doing the same exercises or drawings or pictures or so forth. So what I always say is if you can um, expand your uh, horizons a little bit and go out and uh, maybe buy a new brush, or two once in a while and try it out and see how it works and maybe um, you know tr try uh, you know pulling some new uh, photographs off the internet that are maybe different artists that you like uh, watercolor artists that are maybe a little bit of different you know have a different technique than maybe someone that you're following uh, at the time being you can come up with some great um, valuable learning lessons when you do that and it also just helps you to create a more um, diversified technique, a set of tools, so to speak, if like a toolbox. So the more different techniques you practice, you're going to have more tools in your toolbox. And that means if you come across an issue when you're doing a painting or you're trying to um, tackle a new subject matter, you'll have more tools in your toolbox, toolbox to try to um, attack or work with those new um, styles of uh, painting or um, some new subject matter you're going to work on. So it always helps just to have more techniques than less. Um, so I always say practice as many uh, te techniques as you can, but I think it's good to stick with one main technique, really. Um, and then maybe as an offshoot, you try other ones here and there just to see how they work and just to maybe do a little bit of, you know, practice off to the side once in a while to take a break from your normal routine. So normal routine is important, I will say that but also to going off on the sidetrack a little bit and practicing some different techniques will help you. So I'm hoping that this is what this does, is this helps you to try some new techniques, some new brushes, maybe some new paint colors, some new design ideas, some new subject matter. Um, that's what I have always done as a watercolor artist, especially after a couple years or so of really doing it all the time. I noticed that I needed more interesting things to work with to keep myself interested and excited about it. So I'm hoping you'll kind of, um, if you run into that roadblock where you feel like you're getting bored with certain things in your painting, that's when I hope you'll just um, grab a new brush somehow or, um, you know, some new paper, some new subject matter, a new artist's uh, style. You pick up a new style maybe of someone that paints a little differently than you normally do. And I think that'll just all help you to achieve your best results that you want um, in your in your watercolor painting. So let's get right into it here. I have um, a more thicker uh, lead pencil here. Um, it's a um, retractable lead pencil. Statler is the brand. Um, actually, this might be something a little different. Uh, this is a Statler, I believe. The, 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 uh, it's worn off the uh, lettering, so I can't really tell right now. But And then there's also, this is a Statler. Um, sharpener so this is the thicker lead pencil to a 1.0 lead and you put it in you know you retract this here so this retracts in and out really simple and then you put it into this and then it comes out with a nice point so this is a little bit uh, heavier of a uh, pencil heavier lead and it's also just weightier so here um, what I'll do is we'll, we'll do a nice, beautiful um, scene along the shore, along the ocean. And um, I already have sketched out the, the drawing underneath this, but it's a little hard to see with the lighting. So what I just wanted to do is just kind of show you what the sketch looks like somewhat and how I went about sketching it before I paint. And the other thing I would say is I did paint it, or I did sketch it very lightly underneath here. So on this finished watercolor paper, I sketched it very lightly because I don't want too many pencil lines showing through on this particular painting. Although I normally like pencil lines showing through my, my paintings. But for this this occasion, um, that just doesn't really kind of seem to be like the, the look because 
I kind of lightly sketched this. I didn't really contour draw this one. So, um, so essentially, I just took a a photograph offline, and then I kind of just got the feel of it, and I said to myself, "All right, let's kind of get the basic idea of the drawing." So I wanted to get the horizon line of the ocean across the page, and it's about one-third one up from the bottom, the ocean horizon line. And then there's um, some there's some cottage, cottages here, so I just I sketched them in. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to go a little darker here so we can kind of see here. So I got the roof roof line and I did the doors and a couple windows and then there was another uh, section over here maybe and another couple windows And then over here, I did a nice, uh, some palm trees. And I lightly sketched them. I, I didn't go with too much, um, with too much uh, care and, uh, you know, sp specifics. I, I just sort of tried to keep it loose and the ideas of palm trees and then I had another smaller one here and again I keep my hand resting on the paper at all times and I tend to work left to right since I'm right-handed so I would start my sketch usually on the right left side of the page and then work my way across in this way because I have my hand at all times on the paper resting my hand on the paper firmly and lightly sometimes if I'm making lines I'm using light pressure to do this and again this is just a rough sketch the the painting and the brushes and everything in the paint are in the watercolor are gonna take over and do all the work on this on these trees here but I just wanted to kind of rough them in so that's pretty much the the trees to the left or to the right you can you can create this any way you want you can move things around from your photograph if you have a photograph and you want to change it you can move things around the way you think it looks best or the way you want it to look. It's your painting. You're the artist. And there's some, you know, foreground here. And I think there was a couple fence posts maybe. And then some rocks. And again for like rocks and things we can just make a note of them here with just a little bit of pencil marks and then we know when we're using our brush later we'll put those in. And then we just have some some waves in the water. So this is all water here and over here and then some water over here too on this side which looks good. And then maybe here there's a little bit of uh, bushes maybe some trees here a little bit too just to uh, make it interesting along the along the house. Good thing to remember is um, when you're doing trees and bushes and, and uh, palm trees and foliage and things and grass maybe some grass and weeds and things um, tend to keep them all swinging in the same motion that usually looks really good I know in real life if the wind blows things go back and forth across like so but in a painting if you keep everything flowing in the same direction you know like the leaves and the branches and the bushes and stuff if, if you kind of have them all leaning in the same direction it, it makes for more realistic and, and pleasing look look to your painting just something to keep in mind but it's always good I think you know for the for the most part to have your your trees and your bushes again and your twigs and grass and things like that sort of going in the same direction with maybe one or two occasionally maybe just a couple leaves or blades of grass going the other way but for the most part most of them going in let's say the way the wind is blowing in that direction okay so that's how I did my sketch only thing different was I did it lighter. I didn't do it as dark here as you can see. 
So if I lift this up here, you can see my sketch probably. Somewhat lighter though. Okay, so we we have our sketch done. We take a break, walk away 10-15 minutes, take, you know, a nice uh, break. Let our concentration level build back up again. Sometimes if we work in for too long of a time, and if we don't take breaks, it, it tends to lead to mistakes on the paper, like with the painting or the drawing. So if you tend not to take breaks, trust me, take breaks, and you'll see you'll, you'll have more of an easier time with um, having problems with maybe the drawing not going as good or, or your painting. Um, okay, so we got this here, sketch done. I am using my pretty much my maybe like four brushes here, th three mops, and then a round. So these are squirrel hair mops, and this is a Kalinsky Sable round brush with a nice point. These mops have beautiful points too as well. And that's the brushes. And then of course I'll zoom out so you can see the my setup, which on our last video series we we looked at our setup. So our setup is pretty simple. We have um, palettes and paint on the left, which I say you should do the opposite of this. If you're right-handed, you would have your palette on your right side with your water and your sponge for checking water. So when you have your brush or brush and you put water on it, you tap it on the sponge a little bit, take a little bit of the excess water off, and then you can go to your palette over here on this right side. I do things a little odd here for my own reasons, but it's not a good plan to put your palette across. It's not a good idea to cross over the top of your paper when you're working. You should usually have either, if you're left-handed, everything on the left or right. And then if, you know, of course, if you're right-handed, it's a lot easier if you have everything on your right. And if you're left-handed, it's easier to have everything over on your left. And working in that fashion is much more um, of a technique that'll, that'll keep you from dripping anything onto your to your watercolor paper when you're working. All right, so let's maybe start this here. Again, this is a nice um, so I have some French ultramarine blue and some um, some uh, purple mixture. And we're going to do some clouds to start with. Then I'm going to go in with some burnt umber. Burnt umber, a little bit of alizarin crimson to warm that up just a little bit. More of a reddish color. And maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. And then maybe a little bit of cerulean blue. So I'm making sort of a grayish color with a little bit of warmth to it with some, again, burnt umber burnt sienna, a little bit of cerulean blue for the clouds. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, we're going to do the sky, lots of water. I'm going to put in the clouds first. Lots of water. Then I mix in some blue. Okay, some French ultramarine and purple. Just some touches of blue in there, just to, and that's about it. I'm not going to go crazy here, but we got on plenty of water, plenty of clouds, and I'll just get some more around here and there. Okay, that's good. We'll be back. All right, it's part two. We're doing a nice landscape here, uh, seascape. 
And what have we done so far? Good question. We have gotten our preliminary sketch in lightly with a nice uh, 1.0 pencil, retractable uh, lead pencil. Then we um, went with our first glazing or, or first wash. And um, in some of my recent videos, I've been kind of trying new techniques. As we always say, try new techniques. Why not give it a try? You're, you're going to learn some new ways that the watercolor medium is going to um, uh, challenge you to approach things differently and be more keen and on your toes as you paint. So here we did our first glazing which kind of is a very much a help to a watercolor artist. If you can do things in glazings you go with a first light glazing, sky and clouds, um, then you know you really already have like the base of your painting completed and then you, now we're just going to go in and we're going to do our middle tones and dark tones or tonal values. Um, at this point. Since we have our sketch already completed, we don't have to worry about where we're going to be painting. We have our, in a sense, essence, a map of what we have to do on the paper already. And if we're, of course, I'm working from a photograph and I, for, because of copyright issues, I really can't, most times I can't show my photographs of what I'm doing because it might be um, someone else's artwork and they decide that they're going to take legal action against me to uh, um, because I'm using their, their taking photographs of their work or using their work on, on mine. So uh, be very careful if you're an artist and you're using other people's artwork, especially if you're going to sell it. Uh, if you're going to sell your artwork and it's a copy of someone else's painting, that's really wrong. And as, if, of course, an artist can, you know, um, try to take legal action against a person if they do do that, which um, is, is not good. That's not a, not a good issue to be involved in. So, uh, anyway, um, again, we're first wash is complete, first glazing, clouds, sky color. I used French ultramarine blue and um, also mineral violet. So it's a purplish blue, but more blue. Just a little bit of mineral violet, uh, mineral violet in there to uh, you know give that little bit of a variation that blue. And cerulean blue as well, mixed in with some burnt umber and some burnt sienna for the cloud colors, the darker, uh, warmer tones. So this actually is a really nice look when you have some of those warmer tones in the sky, like the clouds. Usually clouds are cooler, but sometimes you can warm up a cloud and maybe add a little bit of, you know, warmer color to it. Um, to your artwork, you can really create it any way you want. You can make the sky... Uh, really any uh, colors you want. So we're going to start with our, uh, our we're going to, let's say, let's start with our we'll start with our tree trunks, our uh, palm tree tree trunks. So let's go with some green Some burnt umber, some more burnt umber there, a little bit of uh, raw sienna, touch of uh, blue. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's try that. Now I'm going to vary I'm going to vary um, make variations in this. So I took a little bit of a tissue and dabbed a little bit. What we wouldn't want to do is just take a big blotch of paint and just take one big stroke and go up and do the the tree. That would look boring. So here we're going to take take our time. Who likes a uh, some dry brush. Dry brush is always good. 
let's try some dry, dry brush here there we go some dry brush that looks fantastic maybe a a look of um, some shapes that kind of give it a, a round look like that so ba basically I'm making sort of like a cylinder shape here and there and I'm taking my time going up but I want to keep that nice flow clean off the brush tap it on the sponge now maybe we'll go and we'll get a lighter tone I'll start going over here I'll pick up some of that paint a little bit of a lighter tone there some more dry brush okay now we I would say if you're painting like this your first um, I'm looking at a picture of course so I'm looking at a photograph across from me and in the photograph there's two trees next to each other like this with the branch the palm trees on top so here the best method to do this would be do both trunks first then do the tops this way we're focusing our energy now on doing the the trunks of the trees the palm trees take that dry that off a little the brush off a little bit with tissue and then we get some dry brush I think I'll go in and get some green and make this more of a green now change that a little bit add a, add a little bit more there okay a couple splashes down there there we go and let's get some some cylinder shapes up here maybe see that looks good if you do those little round cylinder shapes on the trunk itself it makes it look round okay now we have some French ultramarine blue, sap green, nice rich dark, some burnt umber, and then we're just going to go in and do some nice um, some nice bold strokes here. See how I just kind of you can always, uh, before you do that, you can always take a practice piece of paper first and kind of do a couple of practice runs on what you're going to do before you go in on your paper. You know, kind of say to yourself, well, how do I want to make these these palms on this palm tree? So you can, you can kind of work it out on a piece of scrap paper first. And then when you go in to do it, you kind of already have practiced, like a, you know, a little bit beforehand and you have it and I see some yellow ochre here too some golden colors so I'm gonna do a couple of those I'm gonna keep this painting a little more um, loose and free and I'm not going to spend you know you can spend as much time as you want and you like as you're painting and you know I, I say I, I like more faster looser paintings myself but you might like a lot more details so you can take your time a little more and kind of work things out you know more details if you like but that's pretty good for what I'm doing I, th I think that's I'm get, seeing that that looks and I'm just going to kind of quicken the pace here a little bit just to okay. 
the key is to keep your uh, mixtures changing. You don't want to you want to have a lot of different mixtures going. Very very you know make make variations a lot in your in your mixes. That looks great if you do that if you can if you can remember to do that to mix. Um, I'm seeing that. Uh, All right, I think that's looking pretty good. And again, I'm th I'm changing the colors here to make it look more uh Sometimes too you can you can just block in some color. It doesn't every stroke doesn't have to be a, a branch or leaves or something. You, you can always Okay, that looks good. Now let's stick with the same colors. Maybe add a little bit of, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of alizarin and crimson here, just for a little warmer color here. A little bit of uh, yellow ochre. And I think I'll, I'll use that for the roof. All right, so I'm going to work over here now and do some roof colors for these bungalows, uh, these bungalows along the side of the shore here, this beautiful shore scene. We got the waves crashing, the seagulls singing, the... Um, wind and the breeze blowing and no, there's no worries we're at the shore that means it's vacation time or no worries at all just enjoying the nature the ocean sounds the seagulls the sand just relaxing and i'm putting on the roof over here and I'm going to connect up these roof shapes with the um, Okay, I'll start another section of uh, another section over here of paint. The idea is not to get things mixed up too much. Mix up what you like and then if you need more spaces you just move along the palette and create a new spot for some new color and then if you have to you can wipe up and then you can start more uh, more mixes as you go so this is pretty much in shade but it is a warm shade so we'll leave this warm over here and this will be the light side where the light's striking along this side coming from the right. So these walls over here will be will be white, bright white. And we can fill in the windows a little bit late, uh, you know, later. We don't have to do them right now. Let me check on the time here. Okay, we're at 14 minutes. So I will do some more uh, yellow ochre here. A little bit of dry brush, yellow ochre. A little bit of gray into that. Okay, I'm going to leave some more whites there. Okay. Okay, we're back. It's part three. 
I know you guys and gals love multi-parts here. Lots of stuff to get into, lots of details. That's where you learn lots when you're uh, looking at the details of things, what's going on. Please leave me feedback in the comments if you um, can think of anything that might be um, more helpful. Like right now, I'm thinking, do I zoom in a little more closer to the paper? But then you're not going to see my mixing and you're not going to see my palette uh, and my, my brush and my uh, water pail and some of these things. So I'm trying to see if I can shift my table. You probably don't need to see the water container and sponge. So if I can slide my setup down here a little bit. Sometimes I get lazy and just don't want to move stuff around. Let's see here. All right, that's a little better. All right, that's that's better. And if we could go a little more to the right here. Oh, we'll go back this way. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, that's a little better. All right, so you get to see the palette and the painting closer. The painting's on like a a bit of a, a angle. I would say it's about a 20 degree angle. So I guess if I look at it from an angle perspective, my board's about, this is uh, 45 degrees like that. My board's probably about like this. Uh, that's a, actually, this is a uh, 90 degree right, right there. So this would be 45 degrees. Yeah, it's about 20 degrees. I have a prop underneath my board like that. So that's about 20 degrees angle for my um, my board here with my paper on it. And you can kind of see it by the video here that it's kind of on an angle over here on the right side. So if you don't see that angle on a video, then you know the person's wor working completely flat straight. And the more of an angle here you see. And then also too, that's if the person's got their camera set, set straight up on top or over the top of the, the painting. Not to get into too much detail, but you can kind of figure stuff out sometimes if you're watching somebody's video and they don't mention maybe the angle of the paper or whatever. In any case, this looks a little better, I think, just overall. You can see the painting a little more close, closely. And my mixing over here. So now we're going to do more sap green, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, nice dark for some of our um, foliage here. Okay. Um, also some burnt umber. Mineral violet, French ultramarine blue, and then here we're going to do some so here I'm going to do some loose trees just um, like that. So those are the the trunks. And then for the leaves, let's use some yellow ochre too. And then here when we do our leaves, we just have fun. We're thinking trees, upward strokes maybe, like this. Wind, wind is going this way. So I'm going to make my leaves flow that way too. I just want to make sure I'm okay. Leave lots of white spaces. I think that looks good. What do you think? Do the white spaces, uh, the light spaces, look good between the leaves or? Would it look better if we just went with just a large 
block of color like this. I think I think this looks better, leaving some light between the leaves. So I try different things. I always try different things, see how they look. Okay, we're doing some interesting uh, leaf uh, leaf shapes and tree shapes around this roof. Okay, we'll mix up some more French ultramarine blue. Sap green, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and then we can darken up a few spots within this on the under, some of the under portions where there's less light, so the light's coming from the top. Okay, and we'll use some more yellow ochre. Go and we have some okay, I'm not getting too fussy here. I'm trying to just get those nice abstract looking uh branches, maybe some more over here. Some of the lighter yellow ochre, maybe I'll try to mix over here a little bit looks like it's kind of dark and uh, I'm probably gonna just have one or two branches over here maybe just to kind of like that okay that looks pretty good okay bit of a splash or two. Okay. Okay, so in essence here what we're trying to do is maybe make a nice kind of like pathway of nice darks, spots of dark colors kind of going through the painting. So we'll continue to add more darks. Right now we're we're going to um, put some dark uh, darks here. We'll do some greens. We'll do some shadowing. under the uh, eaves of the roof. Go a little darker there. Okay, now um, let's French ultramarine blue and mineral violet, like purplish. That kind of looks good, like shade, uh, like in the shade. The um, and then we can go with some more dark French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. Burnt Sienna. And yeah, maybe we'll do some. Uh, so I wouldn't go back in where those wet shadows are. That that would be a problem. That would kind of smear and, and blossom. And so here we'll do the. We'll just do some. Couple windows, quickly.
here you can let these sit for a few minutes and then come back in when it's a little more dry and then just add a little bit of uh, maybe I'll make that a door there so as that dries a little bit then you can kind of add more water and f finish things up a little bit this is a little bit too wet where the um, shadows are because I want a couple windows over here I'll let, let that go for now check our time let's um, again we're sticking with the same colors you'll notice um, I haven't really used many I haven't used a lot of the colors of my palette I've used actually a limited palette really in a sense I've used essentially a limited palette you hear that term a lot so it just means I'm really using a limited amount of paints I'm not really using all of the paints I'm just using a few so I'm just using basically sap green French ultramarine blue with just a touch of the mineral violet and and some burnt umber and burnt sienna and then some yellow ochre and that's pretty much it so now we'll some French ultramarine blue sap green I'm going to start doing the ocean water So I'm doing the water. I think green looks really good in water, so we're going to do some greens. Again, this is your painting. Here I'm just doing the way water would kind of flow. Back and forth with the brush. I'm just doing the same thing with the brush. Less is more here. Just those few sways of the brush and we have ocean waves and water and we don't have to sit here and get too technical about it. A couple splashes for water. And we're really in in a good phase of the painting now. We're sort of everything is looking good. It's got a finished look to it now. Everything's coming together. Again, always remember with watercolors, always wait till you're almost completely done before you really get you know, um, worried about anything because a lot of times watercolors don't look so great when you're in the middle of painting. They, they look much better toward the very, very end of the painting. So I, I always remember that. I always struggled with that because a lot of times I'd start a painting and by the time I was just way halfway through it, I'd be like ready to, you know, throw it out the window and start another one. Then I really, you know, heard one of, I heard another artist say that, like, you know, never judge a watercolor painting, with, you know, when you're first starting it, always let it develop and, and then, and then you can worry about it at that point. And then usually by that time, it, it's coming together and looks fine. So this is looking good. Um, we've got a little bit more to do. We'll probably have to do one more part where we can kind of button everything up and uh, have everything exactly the way we want it to look without being too overly finished. So let's put some rocks in. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. How do you feel these paintings look? These more loose and uh, abstract looking paintings. Does everyone out there like these? Or I'm often curious to what people think about different styles of watercolor painting. Okay, and then I just connect those up a little bit. And some more lines just to kind of, and then maybe some shadowy lines over here just a little bit coming into the painting on this side. We don't know what's over there, but shadows are shadows. Okay, everyone, we're back. 
part four, we're going to finish up the final details of this uh, seascape, this uh, loose uh, style seascape in watercolor. Um, we've we've really completed pretty much everything we need to. The um, usually the thing is with you'll always hear me say take breaks and taking breaks is great. So I've, this is my uh, third break. <clears throat> so this is my fourth uh, time coming back to the painting. And if you even check out my timestamps, you'll see how much time actually in between uh, paintings um, or in between glazings and, and um, our work here, you'll see that the time um, that's elapsed in between videos. So it's probably like, you know, 20 minutes in between each uh, glazing and each time we work a little bit and then we take a break. So we've taken a lot of breaks and uh, it's really good. We Each time we take a break, we can look, come back to the painting and kind of look at it for a few minutes and kind of see how things are coming along and what we need to do. So right now, um, it's still looking really, or it's actually looking fine now. This is like, you know, to me is pretty much like 99% complete. We just, I think we can do a few more things to it. Um, maybe, you know, you're the artist. When you look at your painting, you might say, I want more details in it. That's great. You can put more details in it. You paint your painting, you know, according to what your style is and what you like to do. For me, I just find that I like them a little bit, I like my paintings a little bit underdone, like so. Um, I like to leave things just a little, not as much, uh, not as much details, but enough detail that everything looks looks pretty good. Um, but that's, that's my kind of style and what I like. And of course you can, um, you know, if you enjoy more details and that, you know, it's your painting and you create the look you want. So here, what I'm thinking is I need to do a few more details. Um, one thing I need to do is a little bit of French ultramarine blue. Mineral violet. I wanted to add a little bit of shadow over this here, on this side of the, that part of the roof there. And a lot of artists call this pu pulling the painting together. And then here we can maybe just do a few. So there I just did a couple quick little lines just to, um, on the uh, top portion of the uh, gable areas of the roof for the vents. I think that looks good. Again, there might be a chance of doing too much detail, so I want to just kind of, that to me is fine, just a couple parallel lines just to show that there's a, a little bit of um, fence on the top of that area of the roof. Um, I thought maybe a little bit of a line here just to kind of show the the front and then maybe a little bit of shadow under there all right so that's good for that portion shall we do some fence posts should we fire in some f fence posts let's try it We'll use some burnt umber, yellow ochre, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of sap green, okay everything is going this way so I would say Okay, fence post. Let's fire in another one here. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just doing these real, you know, just one one stroke and that's it. You can do different style fences if you like to. Sometimes, a lot of times you'll see at the shore the um, like the picket type fences. Um, here I might think this is more of like a maybe a foreign country, maybe not so much like the United States, but maybe a foreign country where they might have some cattle along the shore here at their villages, at their cottages. Um, so we might have some cows or, or sheep or something. So maybe there's some. And again, I try to vary the vary the color a little bit. Then we'll do some more dry brush. Here, I don't want to block. I want to leave maybe this one open, so we're not sort of blocking the viewer. And then I dry off some more paint. And as things go into the distance here, it's a little more, you don't see as much detail. So that seems fine. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we can, um, we'll be a little daring here. We'll, well, maybe we'll try some I think we'll, I'll think we'll leave, leave it this way. It kind of looks good with the limited palette. I was tempted to kind of start going in with some different colors now, but this really does look really good with a limited palette. The only daring thing I did do is I added some Viridian green here in the ocean, over here in the ocean and over on this side, and then I also put some Viridian green in up here just a little bit. So I kind of put a little bit of interesting um, kind of color that wasn't really in our limited original limited pa limited palette that we use for this but so this looks really good now the thing is if you ever have a problem on your on your painting where you know let's say let's say your cat your um shore houses here your cottages along the shore here beautiful uh, scene if, let's say they came out great but the trees over here that you did came didn't come out too good at all you can always keep some mats, you know, that you can get at the store, at your local um, hobbies and craft store. You can get some mats, and they come in all different sizes. And you can take these, and you can kind of, if you had a problem on one section of your painting, your painting is still good. You can just, uh, you know, move it to a, to a smaller size. So, so we can see here, we can kind of take this and use a smaller mat and kind of move it around and say, all right, this was, uh, we had a problem with the, the left side over here with some of the trees so and then we could take it and isolate it and maybe say this looks pretty good like that or maybe like this or something like this and we can make, make it a smaller painting or if everything looks fine we can take a larger mat like that you can see the different looks with it. You know, you can move it up or down. And I have the tape tape here, so I'll probably we'll take the tape off and see how it looks just the way we painted it. I think this looks pretty good. It's it looks um, finished and loose and uh, good color. A feel for the look of the ocean and the seascape. Maybe we'll zoom in a little.
and I always say try to feel like you're there in your imagination when you're painting or when you're getting ready to, to do the painting or while you're painting it you know you might take breaks and say I'm I'm going to paint like one part today and then another and then another glazing tomorrow and so you can work in as fast or as slow of a pace as you want when you're doing your paintings I think um, depends how much time you have. I know some of you might be very, very busy and you can't really sp spend two hours at one time doing something, you know, doing a painting. So you kind of can do it at your own pace. Um, but I find like thinking about the ocean, try to like see yourself there, hear the ocean waves crashing, the seagulls, you know, chirping and flying around and feeling the wind in your mind. Try to try to feel the place and th think about it and concentrate on it for a little bit here and there as you're doing your painting and it kind of when you do that I think it helps um, the process of the painting like it uh, it has like a magic to it when you're when you're painting it and uh, working through it um, and again too if something happens where something doesn't go perfect on a portion of your painting you can crop it like here I can I can zoom in like that Maybe move the light over here a little bit. So then you can zoom in and, you know, you can take a... You, know, you can section things off. I'll bring my camera off here. And you can kind of see the close-ups of the... Um, of the buildings here so it's a loose style this one definitely as we called it the uh, loose style uh, seascape painting you know I painted things kind of you know I didn't fuss around too much like with the with the um, with the trees and the, and the buildings the uh, co cottages everything was done you know pretty the sketch is kind of a very important part if you can sketch and do the contour drawing you know pretty in a pretty solid fashion where you, you get things the way you want it then your painting process goes pretty easy because you're really just you know working your washes onto the paper using your pencil lines really to, as your guide and then it's just more of a, a game of concentration on your on your colors and your tonal values like you know here you want to keep your you want to keep the um, foliage and everything dark the dark green So that was a French ultramarine and sap green and burnt umber and also a little bit of uh, yellow ochre for the for the green for the greenery here for the, the palm trees and the other trees. But it kind of looks really cool because you can kind of see how those the greens and the darks look really nice. They kind of like those are like the the uh, strength of the painting and then the other parts of it um, are you know kind of more subdued but all together it makes it look great the whole combination of the darks and the, and the lights and uh, I think this looks like a bright you know bright sunny day at the shore and okay we'll sign out for now everyone uh, enjoy your painting um, knowledge is power keep learning um, and we'll see you on the next video bye bye Hi everyone, Chris Petrie. I decided to make a part five on this uh, video series. Um, I thought it'd be really interesting to kind of give you a uh, another a bit of, um, I guess, uh, insight into how uh, I sometimes think of my paintings and um, some of the issues I might have. And, and you'll probably come across these same issues as I do. And I figured it would be kind of interesting to just kind of like make an additional video to the um, to the series here so what I found was I went in and I did a couple added details once we, we left on our last video so I kinda of fixed up some of the doors and windows here on these cottages along the ocean and I also added in a couple figures uh, I made them very small and I put them over here like sort of in the distance behind the um, cottages sort of like so you see that there's some people along the um, shoreline here 
having fun on a nice beautiful sunny day and along the shore but I didn't want to make any large figures anywhere because I felt like if we were to do that we would do that in the beginning and draw in some really nice figures maybe somebody walking into the scene we could make a larger figure so your figures as you add them into your paintings um, you know you can think about that as you're creating your your drawing as to whether you want figures in uh, the painting or not so usually um, if you're putting them if you're putting figures in in the distance er, distant areas like the middle ground or the or usually it'll, it'll either be the the um, foreground or the middle ground figures really wouldn't be set in the in the um, distant parts of the painting really so much so I did put a couple in um, to just um, have a feeling of some people in the in the picture which makes it much more interesting and right now I had a problem with the clouds I didn't like the way the sky turned out on this painting so much so instead of just leaving it as it is and then thinking to myself well this is really not a a really good painting that I could you know maybe frame and um, you know uh, sell at a um, a fair or a craft fair or maybe at a gallery or something I figured let's go and we'll try to fix the uh, sky a little bit so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to use the um, you know just the method of blotting out some of the paint so the first thing I want to do is put some tape and tape down my my paper so this is important tape down your paper when you're going to do any fix uh, correction work so this way the paper and your or your block I'm using a block here a watercolor block um, if you're just using a, a regular piece of uh, watercolor paper without a block attached to it in any case you want to you want to get it stable on your on your art table so that it's not moving around because you want to focus your energy on fixing the correction and not really trying to have the paper sliding all around the watercolor uh, painting moving all around on you so I just taped it down nice and firmly all four sides then what I did is I um, I'm, make, I'm making sure I get some clean water so I'm gonna pour this over here out of sight I don't want to pour it over the top of the painting always be aware you know of course of your painting not to uh, work over top of it if you if you can help it that's always an important thing and so here here we're, we're here we're gonna do some corrective work we're gonna correct some of these whites blo blotches of white paper on these uh, areas in the sky here so I have some fresh clean water I put that to the side and then I'm gonna look for a brush that is maybe um, maybe a flat brush or something that I don't use all that often I don't want to use my good uh, my good uh, Kalinsky sable brushes for for uh, scrubbing or scrubbing out paint or anything. I don't think we're gonna have to do a lot of scrubbing here though. I think we can use a, a paper towel or a rag to actually just fix this a little bit. So to fix these unpleasant white spots of white paper that were left, I'm gonna wet the paper with a flat brush with clean water some of the white spots are okay behind the trees there the palm trees but right here in the foreground or in the uh, forefront of the painting so I'm wetting these white spots really 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 well with lots of water with a flat brush being very careful not to get anywhere near that green foliage there I don't want to have that uh, working out into the sky so much. And then over here, I can leave a little bit of the white spots over here. That's that's not a problem. I think it's more or less over here. All right, so I got those large white spots covered with fresh, clean water, and then I'm just going to let it sit for a few minutes and let the water soak into the paper and the paint. And then what we'll try to do is we'll We'll start over here on a very small spot with a, a white uh, white rag here. It's just an old T-shirt, and we'll try to just gently blot and scrub a little bit and see if we can blend that in a little bit. So maybe we can leave it light, but kind of give it a a cloudy effect, maybe a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so that's one section right there. That works good. So I would always start on a smaller spot, really. That's not so visible right in the front here. And let's see if we can do this. 
there we might have to scrub a little bit with a brush so I have a a good kind of scrubbing brush somewhere but it might be way far out of reach um, let me see okay let me see if I can see it or take a look okay I found one of my scrubbing brushes which I use to make corrections with and it's it's a nice it's kind of got a just like a, a it's almost like um it's almost like a regular round brush clip clipped off like at the end of it clipped off so that's just or a makeup brush a makeup brushes look like, I think like that so it's like a flat tapered look and this is a Windsor Newton uh, Regency gold 535 3 8 so this is and it's the bristles this is um, the bristles are kind of synthetic bristles so it so I'm just going to kind of scrub now the thing is we don't want to damage the paper if we can help it so I can see that we're going to go in and get some paint so I'm going to use the same colors we used before except I'm going to go with just a lighter version of the the uh, mineral violet which is purple a purple color I'm going to use that and some cobalt blue and maybe a little bit of French ultramarine blue I'm going to see if I can diffuse some color in there okay that looks pretty good that's safe to go in there so I'm just dabbing in the paint into the paper with some of that French ultramarine blue and uh, mineral violet and a little bit of burnt umber too I'm going to try to mix up the same as we did before to mix it up a little bit and once I do this then I'm going to go back and blot and see what happens this is usually you know this fixing I probably need to brush up on some fixing techniques I haven't really a lot of times if, if I don't like the way a, a section of a painting comes out I kinda just chalk it up as you know that painting goes to the to the uh, to the filing drawer all right so I think we did okay here we did a good uh, and now I'm just kind of giving it some okay I think that looks good so here that's just a quick way to kind of do a little fix up on a, on a watercolor painting where the I left too much of the white paper on there and it kind of looked you know like um, unpleasant with just the plain white paper it didn't really look like clouds so much so if you have a, a painting or two or three or so or four or you might have a lot of paintings around maybe you put to the side and you said I don't like it you can go back in and make corrections to your watercolors you just have to be very careful take your time with it do a little section first see how it comes out the thing I will say is if you're using top quality paper you can do correcting and it usually goes halfway decent to fairly well but if you're using a less expensive paper maybe um, that's going to be a little more difficult to make corrections on so um, I, I would say if if you have paintings that are on good paper like finished paintings you might have tried to do some finished paintings for a gallery show or something or um, a fair craft fair or something like that or for a gift or something that you're going to give to somebody and it's on good paper it didn't come out so great there's a couple spots you can fix those spots probably you can try to if it's not too bad by uh, using this technique and uh, but if it's on very uh, if it's on very inexpensive watercolor paper I've tended to notice that it doesn't go well at all um, usually the paper gets 
um, gets like uh, the paper disintegrates very easily and then you get like very rough looking like um, marks and the paper actually breaks apart and looks like it's torn on the uh, top of the paper the actual uh, watercolor uh, paper itself the actual finished painting so in any in any case I thought this was just a nice little added touch um, to our video series here making a few little corrections and I think this correction came out pretty good um, definitely improved the look of the sky and um, overall I think this is um, a fun painting to do to try and you'll also have a fun time just uh, imagining a, a beautiful shore scene and the uh, the fun and uh, the enjoyable time uh, being along a, a nice beautiful seascape okay we'll see you on the next video bye bye Hi everybody, I'm Chris Petri. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for stopping by my channel here. We're doing watercolor art 24-7. Um, we're actually uh, going to do a, a delightful painting today. We're going to use some simple um, subject matter. We'll do a still life. We have a coffee cup here. Um, I have a um, plastic fruit, which is an orange. Uh, styrofoam. So you can use real uh, subject matter. You can. I have uh, a large amount of um, faux fruit. Um, if you look up faux fruit online, you can find um, really all kinds of great. Uh, you know, every apples, oranges, grapes. Um, you know, uh, you name it. Uh, pears and uh, different style apples, green apples. You know, Granny Smith apples. Red Delicious apples, every kind of fruit and vegetable you can imagine. Um, styrofoam. This looks very real, very convincing. They have a really beautiful detail the way they created these. So you can you can find some really good quality um, faux fruit. And what's nice about this is you can put it into a um, a bag or a, a duffel bag and bring it anywhere you want and practice watercolor and. You can also um, leave it in the studio. You don't have to worry about uh, anything like um, bugs or things going rot, you know, rotting or anything like that. You know, I leave my faux fruit in my studio, and um, I have everything: limes, lemons, you name it. Like I said, all you know, as much as they've made uh, every kind of faux fruit and vegetable you can, you know you can imagine. So I'm going to use just a simple orange. I'm going to use a simple white um, coffee cup. I'll use also a, a, a picture. Um, maybe we'll, we'll create. Maybe I'll make a picture. You know, just like for. Um, sometimes I'll just recall. I have an, I have a numerous amount of pictures, uh, clear glass pictures for flowers. I have um, uh, some. I have a couple white pictures for flowers. So I have all different kinds of um, still life um, things in, in my studio that I use and also sometimes I'll just draw from memory and um, maybe we'll do that here for some of our items but again you know be creative set up a couple little still life uh, setting setups for yourself and and just practice on those and here we're gonna we'll, we'll do that we'll set up a nice uh, a cross ring I'm just gonna set up a little few things I'm gonna Take this here and we're going to tape this down. Let's tape down our paper, our watercolor paper. Tape down our palette. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll tape this down first here.
And it's always good to tape down uh, our watercolor paper and then tape tape off our sections that we want to This way when we're done with our exercises and our compositions, we can just take the tape off and we have a finished painting right there waiting, you know, waiting to put into a scrapbook or we can put it on the wall and take, you know, uh, look at it for a few weeks or so and kind of critique it ourselves. That's always good to do. You know, you take your, your paintings and you hang them up in your house or give them away, you know, you give them away sometimes too. Maybe you're going to sell them a few times here and there to friends or, um, you know, gallery shows whatever you do but as an artist uh, it's always good to take your work and you know display it in your your studio in your house and and you can learn from it and say I like that I like this I like that other thing I did there and maybe I'd like to do this different next time I think I could make it look better in this section or that section or so forth so always um, try to improve a little bit each time and also enjoy the victories that you have when you're painting so here let's go in and we'll do a, just a simple composition just so we can get some cool ideas here of so I think I'll so here I'm doing a picture and then I'm going to do my coffee cup and the saucer And I'm going to come around this way. And we'll do our orange here. So this is just a um, fun composition. We're trying to... Um, and maybe we'll have a little bit of fun design on this. We'll do some blue, blue ornamentation on this. And... We'll do some more uh, design here too. Some uh, we'll do some more ornamentation on our. Just lightly here, I'm going to do a very light, um, just so I remember to have some uh, ornamentation and interesting uh, details on our uh, vase here, our white vase. In this exercise, we should keep things loose, keep things fun. Uh, maybe we'll have, we'll pretend there's a little plant over top, over top of this here, some flowers. Maybe there's a a larger vase over here, and there's some some leaves and things here. So we'll just make an indication of that. Hey, that, that looks good and again here we're having fun we're just gonna mix some colors and have a good time here we're not worried too much about is this a you know award-winning uh, you know painting or anything like that we're just having fun we're gonna practice the fundamentals of watercolor right now so right now we just did our contour drawing we went in we looked at our subject matter it could be from a book from a picture you might set up your um, still life with some some cups and saucers and so forth and fruit you can use real fruit you can buy faux fruit um, and vegetables and all kinds of interesting things you could if you don't like those type of things you can set up things that you have around the house that you like maybe um, you name it anything kitchen items um, some of uh, favorite um, heirlooms things like that anything that you want you can just really set them up and, and draw them and paint them so here I'm um, just doing a nice loose uh, representation of the coffee cup and a an orange and a, a white vase. We're going to do some blue ornamentation on this. And there's maybe a little um, some leaves here. And let's see how we can uh, just make this fun. All right, I'll get my brushes here. OK, 
Okay, and I have uh, fresh clean water. Okay, let's uh, get right in and we'll do some of the darks. Let's take some of that blue for our ornamentation. That is French ultramarine blue mixed with a little burnt umber. Maybe a little burnt sienna. Okay. And maybe we'll blot out a little bit there. And maybe we'll go in with some sap green and some olive green. And we'll get a little bit of that leaf uh, shape in there. This is fun. Look at this. How easy is that? This is just absolute fun with colors and all we did was really set down a nice little bit of um, contour drawing, nothing fancy. And now we're letting our uh, paints do the fun, the work. A little splashing. Loosen things up, splash a little bit, have fun. Don't worry too much about how perfect it looks. We're having an enjoyable time here. All right, so we have uh, a little bit of blue for our ornament here, a nice little stripe going along the top of the vase. Let's do some cobalt blue. And just a little flicking around of the brush to pretend we know what we're doing. There we go. Another great little bit of design. And how about here? Maybe a little bit of uh, mineral violet. We'll go over here. Mineral, mineral violet. Purple. Mixed in with a little cobalt blue. Change up the color a little bit. There we go. Another little flick of some detail. And we got it. There we go. And a little more here. Maybe some more in detail on this uh, beautiful vase here. And again, we'll go right into the French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. And let's do a little... Okay, now... We'll use our uh, needlepoint brush. And we'll even, we'll even get into some more fine detail. Even this is pretty fine detail right here, but let's get even to some additional fine detail. Let's uh, Perfect. Okay, now let's take a little bit of that green that we have mixed here and a little bit of the blue and purple over here and let's do some shadowing. Maybe a little cerulean blue too. A little bit of uh, yellow ochre too. Mix in a little bit of warm. Okay, now we're doing uh, negative shape painting. We're taking this area here and we're accentuating the light on this side of the vase over here. So the light's coming from here. If we want to make sure, we just take a light 
insignia like that with a light bulb. And we say the light's coming from here. A little bit, a little more of a yellow ochre just to uh, warm up that cool green and blue that we were using. Okay, now we're at the bottom of the vase, which is in shadow. The light is catching this side of the vase in the um, So we'll, we'll, let, we'll let that be like that. There we go. Um, now to make sure that we accentuate the light on this side of the vase, we will put a little bit of green and blue over here. Maybe a little mineral violet. Maybe we'll just want, we'll just lightly fade this out over here. But this is good. Make sure we do a little bit of a darker dark over here. Again, negative shape painting. We're painting around the subject to make it appear. So if we didn't paint this tonal value, this little darker darker over here on this side of the vase then that part of the vase would not look um, as if it's there. So we want to make sure we we paint negative shape painting to keep our uh, our subject matter looking real. Let's do our uh, orange. Ah, fire in that beautiful orange. Cadmium orange. How, how does that look? That looks great. Let's add a little cadmium red to the bottom section here of that cadmium orange. And some yellow ochre. And then as we go up, let's fade, fade a little bit and make it lighter up here. There we go. A little bit lighter up here. Even if you have to use the tissue and lighten it up a little bit on the top of the orange. Perfect. A little more cadmium red in the bottom. And then we can mix that on. We use a dry brush. We take our cleaner brush, dry it off on the tissue. And then we can take some straight paint right out of the paint, right out of the palette. And go right into the painting. Don't even worry about mixing it onto the palette. Just go straight into the palette and right into the paint, onto the painting. And just dance the brush around a little bit here and there. Rinse off the brush again, dry it really well with some tissue, and then you can just, fit, you know, move the paint around a little bit. Rinse off the brush again, dry it again with no paint, no water, and then just And then you get a nice sense of light on the top of the orange. Plenty of darker tonal value on the shadow area here. It's catching, the orange is catching more light on top. And then let's go in, we'll do a little bit of uh, shadowing on our coffee cup. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll use a little bit of alizarin crimson here in cadmium red. And maybe we'll just do some exciting red over here. Sometimes we don't always have to stick to the what we see in front of us. We can add different things to make it look better. That's what I'm doing here. I'm adding orange and red over here a little bit just to make things look better.
And I'll go in with some uh, French ultramarine blue again. A little bit of green. A little bit of shadowing under there. Let's get back into some of the uh, the greens up here. Let's uh, change our color a little bit. Add a little more burnt umber, or add some burnt umber to that uh, green, which would be sap green and olive green, just to give us a little bit of a different look. Keep things different. Big leaf, small leaf. I was noticing my drawing. I was everything was looking the same size. All the leaves here were looking the same size. I don't, that's not a good look. It's better to change things around a little bit, have things look different, non-symmetrical. So I had one larger leaf and one smaller one. And we'll put a little more green there. And some cerulean blue with some of that green. Then we can go into some uh, yellow ochre. Then we can go back, we'll get our, we'll pick up our needlepoint brush. Some raw umber and some of that yellow ochre. And dance the brush around a little bit. Just to get a little variety here. Then we'll go in, we'll <clears throat> get some more uh, sap green. And again, negative shape painting. I'm going to paint around that handle a little bit. And just splash and And I'll paint in that edge of this vase here. Maybe a shadow over here a little bit. Another little splash over here. And maybe some green over here just to balance things. So I'll put some green over here. Alright, that is it. That is how simple we can have things in watercolor. Just taking a couple simple things like a coffee cup, an orange, you could pick, you know, lemons, limes, any kind of fruit, vegetable you like. You maybe put down a pitcher, maybe some leaves, some shapes of leaf forms next to it. You don't necessarily have to draw a bouquet of flowers here. You could just put something nearby just to, so you have a feeling of like this is near a bouquet of flowers or some uh, a plant, some potted plants. Um, you can expand this idea, make it a full painting, and then add in a potted plant or whatever you would like. But I think the key is it's really fun in watercolor to just do small parts of things. And once you practice small parts of things a lot, then you're sort of already 
ready to do it in a larger painting. Let's say if you want to make a large painting to frame or to bring to a gallery, if you're maybe going to have a gallery show or if you have um, uh, someone commissions you to do a painting for them and they see your work and love it and they want you to paint a, a painting for them they, and they ask you if you can make it, uh, you know, 18 by 24. So if we're always working in smaller format, that can be an issue. But if we paint our smaller format smaller parts of the larger hole, then we can take this idea, add a potted plant to it within a larger painting, and then we have our painting. A coffee cup, a vase, a couple pieces of fruit, and a potted plant. We've already painted this, so now all we have to do is practice doing the potted plant a few times, let's say, and then we can make a larger format, a larger painting, and then we have it. Here I think the only thing I would add is maybe just a little Maybe a little color just over the... Okay. Alright, I hope we had fun here and this is again, you'll always hear me say it, have fun with your watercolors, enjoy, let's work on small comps and then eventually doing the bigger, uh, larger paintings is no problem. And if we peel off our tape, this makes a perfect uh, small composition to pin up on our wall next to our desk where we work, our studio, our office maybe. We work in the office and we want to put up a small painting. Maybe people come by, they love it, they want one too. You can create a couple of these, make, you know, make prints of them or make a couple for our friends at work. Okay, again, let's... Uh, See if we could. Uh... As you can see, nothing too fancy. Really, just uh, very loose, very free. Getting the basic shapes drawn in, and then just you know putting in the color. And really, we used a lot of negative shape painting here. We painted around this white vase quite a bit. The top, around the handle, inside of the handle. So we did a lot of negative shape painting here, painting around an object to make it appear. And as well over here on this side of the vase, we added that paint here to make this side of the vase accentuate that so that we can see that clearly. And lots of good color and fresh color and we had a lot of fun doing it. Alright everyone, we'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.